Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Hey, Tea Sippers. So welcome to another episode. And I have a special guest with me today. I have Jeanne is in the building. And we're going to go ahead and just talk about a few topics here. Say what's up to the people, Jeanne. Hey, everybody. How are you guys all doing today? Interesting topics. No, definitely. Now, I know me and you and a few other people, we've been talking about the whole John McAfee situation. It came up, what, two days ago that he was found dead in his prison cell. Mm -hmm. And he's had a very, very interesting background. You know, everything from inventing the antivirus software. He's had a very colorful life, him running from the U.S. government, him marrying an ex-prostitute who's a Mm -hmm. black woman. And then him, you know, moving to Belize and having all these underage girls in and out of his villa and all this craziness. And then his uh, his neighbor being mysteriously killed. Yeah. He's just had a lot of just crazy stuff attached to him. So what did you think about when you first heard about everything that was going on with John um, McAfee? I wasn't personally, I wasn't surprised. And I, and I can say that because it's, I knew as someone who's kind of somewhat followed him, like not in depth, but knew that he led a very eccentric life. I always had viewed him as someone who really was hyper intelligent and was so intelligent. Those, those in, you know, his eccentrism and his drug use and all of the paranoia which is probably well footed, all kind of came together and all these events eventually spiraled into where, you know, we are today talking about his death in the Spanish prison, you know? You know, the whole suicide thing that he supposedly committed suicide in prison, you know, I found it interesting because it's like, okay, so another millionaire slash billionaire, you know, mysteriously kills himself. Mm -hmm. But the difference between, and it kind of was similar to Epstein, right? That's like the vibe I got when it first came out. But the difference between him and Epstein is that John um, McAfee was super, super adamant that he would never kill himself in prison. And so much so that he even ended up getting a tattoo on his arm. He had posted it, um, I want to say maybe like, yeah, in 2019, he had posted it. Mm -hmm. And basically it's, it's dollar sign whack. Mm-hmm. And that whole thing was him telling people um, when he wrote on the Twitter message, he says, getting messages from the U.S. officials saying, in effect, we're coming for you, McAfee. We're going to kill yourself. I got a tattoo just in case if I suicide myself, I didn't. I was whacked. Check my right arm. And right. he wrote that in 2019 and he got the tattoo. And he's always been very adamant that if he dies in prison, it was a conspiracy. He was killed. He didn't just kill himself. So do you feel like, you know, like there's any merit to what he's saying that, you know, he was killed in prison? I not that message wasn't subtle or subtle. (laughs) (laughs) That message was not subtle. You know, I, when I went to kind of look at his story, you know, from various places, because I'm not necessarily one who will just pull information from one source. Um, I knew that he had gone to Belize and was in Central America. Um, I didn't know what he was doing. Um, And then I had started finding out information of things that happened between, you know, 2018, which was at the time of the mortgage back, you know, crisis in the United States, and then eventually became global, right? And that period of time, him apparently allegedly faking poverty, feigning poverty to go to Latin America to leave the secret life where, you know, he has one piece of an island where he's chilling with apparently this harem allegedly sounds very Jeffy Epstein, doesn't it? And in the interior of the part of the country, he sets up this apparent lab like he's gone full pinky in the brain at this point. Like, I'm like, oh, okay. What did you do to, who did you piss off? And allegedly there's, he's talking in this video and I I sent it to you where, you know, he's talking about, man, 
they might come get me. I'm I'm trying to duck and dodge. I do believe he pissed off the wrong people. I believe that he spoke too much. And I very much could believe that he didn't commit suicide. I'm not going to sit here. I wasn't there, but his life, the way it was led, it just for him to die like that, eyebrows raised. Like, no, nah, uh-uh. So yeah, I definitely agree with you. So I want to go ahead and play the video. Um, it's two videos that are just like really disturbing. And he's basically explaining um, to Vice about how Hillary Clinton has blocked his entry into the U.S. Mm -hmm. embassy and how he feels like the Clintons are trying to kill him as an act of revenge. I um, mean, it's crazy. He even talked about donating his laptops to government um you know, secretaries <laughs> that was loaded with all types of spyware and all types of crazy political tea. So let's go ahead and listen to him talk about that. Okay. When I went on the run in Belize, I had friends in the U.S. Embassy in Belize. I knew I was coming down. I'm not stupid. I had arranged with the head of security. I was going to come in. He said, sir, we have it from the highest authority. We are not to allow you entry into the U.S. Embassy. Understand me. Who was the highest authority of the State Department? Hillary Clinton. I'm an American citizen with a f***ing American passport. I'm sorry. I'm not wanted in America. I've got no crimes in America. Is it not a reason to say, I don't think I'm going to vote for you? And yet you're here now. I, for a month and a half, I was on the run. The reason that the government wanted to collect me was that after they had raided my property in 2012 in the jungle, shot my dog, abused me, destroyed a half million dollars worth of my property over a bogus charge, I was pissed off. And so I, I donated uh, to many secretaries within the government laptop computers, really nice ones, that were preloaded with viral spyware. Within a week, the entire government computer system was in, under my control. I was watching, monitoring, listening. I was looking for information that they had set me up for that raid. I didn't find that. I did find out that the Minister of National Defense was the largest drug trafficker in all of Central America. And the Minister of Immigration, the largest human trafficker. We don't want to get killed by them either, so we're probably not going to care that. That's fine. That. That's fine. No. Very interesting. She said, I want to die. I don't want to die. Let's, let's move on, sir, because this is too deep. That I, I've been around long enough to know when to shut it down. That's what yeah. she said. Yeah, they were definitely reading in between the lines. Like, okay, we didn't come here for all this extra tea. We're mm -hmm. not going to get pulled into this. So that was very creepy, the ending and Ooh, how he said yeah. that. And then there was another interview where he goes in again and he's talking about the government as well. So I'm going to go ahead and play that really quick. Okay. The deep state is a conspiracy theory of... of uh, it's defined as the people within the U.S. government and military who are in secret control of government policy. <laughs> secret? <laughs> Please, people. The deep state is those people within the U.S. government that are career employees that cannot be fired by people that we elect by the Congress or the President. Um, there are the FCC, the, uh, the CIA, the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, the IRS. Are these people in control? Can they enact laws? Fuck yes. They're called regulations. For every law that Congress passes, and we elect Congress to pass our laws, there are 20 regulations enacted by federal agencies that have far more impact on our lives than anything Congress can possibly pass. Uh, is there a deep state? Yes. Uh, can we fire these people? No. Can presidents fire them? No. <laughs> it, it's designed that way so that political parties and political interests cannot affect the deep state. Do you understand the nightmare of our situation, people? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. It's not secret. It's as open as anything could be. In the past, since 1975, 200,000 regulations have been passed by our federal agencies. Uh, encompassing 800,000 pages of fine print uh, people. 
it is no secret. It is as open as it can be. The deep state does control America. Wake up, people, please. God, use some common fucking sense. Thank you. You guys just heard both of those audios. And those were filmed, like, I believe, last year, the year before. And so basically what the news report saying that McAfee was found dead just hours after a Spanish court approved his extradition to the U.S. to face charges for failing to file taxes from 2014 to 2018. And he had been looking at possibly life in prison, which is insane because this was a man that was a certified billionaire. Mm -hmm. And he became a billionaire from being an entrepreneur. He was developing, you know, he had developed software. Uh, he was a security software inventor. He was also involved in cryptocurrency. And I feel like because of his knowledge with the IT systems and security and antivirus, that he could have possibly had potential hacking, you know what I'm saying, um, abilities and things like that, that maybe the government also feared. Because if you think about it, he invented this software. So what mm -hmm. he's not able to tap in to certain databases, you know, and mm -hmm. hold them for ransom and do things like that. I just believe like his death is there's definitely more to it than him just being depressed and, you know, suiciding himself. Now, no. his father had also committed suicide as well. So right. So for even saying was that, you know, genetic, you know, has he been genetically dispositioned to commit suicide? Maybe. <sighs> But I think it's deeper. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, look, like, let's not sit here and pretend like, oh, we're going to ignore the fact that his father committed suicide and he could be predisposed for that. Yes, we understand that trauma is genetically embedded. Like, mm -hmm. that's been proven, right? Okay, fine. Yes, let's put that on the table. But let's also look at what little bit we do know. You know, because we are not going to be able to peel this banana in this conversation because it is so many layers. Like, you know, he he fakes broke after the mortgage back crisis in 2018 and then the upcoming global uh, recession in 2009 flees to Central America where his money is long, creates a lab. He creates a lab. And this is the thing that that I think was really interesting that I found out. He is trying to make plant based antibiotics. Mm. Where are you, sir? Where are you? What are you doing? Really? That's innovative. Now, I, you know, it's, I've done some ethnography around the world. I've been to 30 countries. And one thing I have known is stories where certain people just disappear and die whenever they come up that because, and this is not my tin hat tingling, I just know what I know. And it's like, even like you said, he's trying to create these plant-based, um, you know, medications to help heal the world. And even that part of it kind of reminds me of the whole Dr. Sebi situation. It was in Honduras. So, but it's just very interesting too that these people have the funds and, and have the, the knowledge to create things like this that could help heal the world. And we know one of the most corrupt systems is the pharmaceutical industry. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned in or anchorfm.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the next video.